Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I'm Sandy with Quilted Treasures and More. And this is my Sunday evening live called What's on My Crafting Table. And if you've never joined me before, well, welcome, first and foremost. Secondly, what I usually do is I have a door hanger, sometimes for the season, sometimes it's an order, but most of the time it is uh, just something that I've... Uh, an example I like to paint. And so I'll go through my uh, template sketches that I get each month and I will pick out something to paint and I'll do that on Sunday evening. And I invite y'all to join me, hang out with your favorite beverage and maybe your favorite snack, uh, put on those comfy shoes, or maybe you prefer to be barefooted, <laughs> prop those feet up and enjoy the next hour or so with me. So what's on my crafting table? Well, this week I have been working on an off-road door hanger with its attachments. And so um, I've had that going on. I've also been getting ready to uh, do a fall challenge. Now, if you remember last year, I did a fall challenge and it was the happy fall y'all um, door hanger. I had quite a few orders for those. This year, I will go ahead and tell you it's going to be a double-sided hanger. So Super excited to show you my progress on that one as I go through each day. That won't be happening this week, but it is coming up very, very soon in the weeks ahead. So tonight on my crafting table is this cute little scarecrow family, a mom and a dad, and of course a little, uh, a little one in the scarecrow family there. And so I'm going to be working on that this evening. All right, well, we're going to jump in because there's a lot of colors to this little scarecrow family. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is so cute. And then, of course, as I sat down to uh, pick out colors, I went, oh, my goodness, there's a lot of colors in this one. So I'm like, OK, we may be here for a, a, a tidbit. So we're going to get things started. We're going to start out with the faces. So. I like to try to start with the lighter colors. Sometimes I look at the areas that have the most uh, most work, and sometimes I go with uh, doing the bigger areas first. But this particular case, I'm I'm going to try to start out with the lighter colors and go from there. Now, this color that I'm putting on the face, this is called a light mocha. And so I'm just going to work my way around. Around the face and put. Typically, I put two coats of every color on my door hangers. So we'll get one coat on and then we will work on the other faces and come back to this one. All right, real quick, I am going to get my example photo up here because if I don't, I will end up forgetting to do something. Like right off the bat, I can see where I've got to do their hands as well. So. Sometimes I have an example photo from the uh, sketch that comes with the template when I purchase it. And sometimes, sometimes I like to vary up things, but I still like to kind of see, just to keep, uh, keep myself on track. I like to check out the example photo. So the eyes are going to be black, so I'm really not worried if I get over into um, the eyes. And also, I just noticed, uh, hmm. I did not realize there's a couple of little uh, cheek dots on there. I will have to grab a pink for that. That's one color I did not uh, pick out. When getting ready for the lives, I like to have all my colors pretty much within easy reach. So that way I'm not having to rummage through my paint caddy here. My uh, my little turntable 
<laughs> I got to looking for colors a while ago and noticed my turntable is getting really, really full. It's or on my tier. It's a tier tray is what it is. And uh, I am able to to turn it around and look for colors as I need to. But um, I noticed it was getting very, very full. And I am like, uh oh, this, you know what this means? <laughs> <laughs> this means I'm going to have to uh, either A, figure out something bigger for my paints, or B, and my husband will love this one, uh, <laughs> come up with uh, another uh, tear tray. <laughs> I can hear him now. You don't have enough room on this table for the one tear tray plus all your other stuff. <laughs> Where are you going to put another tear tray? My crafting space, it's been interesting. Our uh, dining area, we do not have a dining room in our home, but our dining area, uh, when everyone... Uh, started working from home, uh, my husband and I halved, sort of, <laughs> our uh, dining room table, which is just a little round table. It's actually sitting behind me here. And so we halved that. Well, uh, with his computer work that he does, he ended up um, having to have a couple of monitors and whatnot. And so needless to say, uh, before long, my half of the table shrunk to about literally this much of the table. So he'll argue that it was more, but, but I'm kidding you not. I barely put a laptop on my little portion of table. Okay. So I kind of moved out of the dining area when, with my, uh, job stuff. But my craft table here is situated <laughs> on one wall in our little dining area. And so it, it stayed. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been kind of interesting trying to get all of our, um, all of our stuff situated where, uh, of course there's, you know, been some adjustments and whatnot and, and going back, opening up and all that good stuff. But, um, of course we never know if with the numbers increasing, we'll be all, you know, back at home working again. So they've been very cautious where my husband works. And so they limited the amount of time that they were coming in. But uh, as I said, you know, that could all change with the coming months and the cooling of the temperatures and all that good stuff. So we shall see. But needless to say, we have an interesting little setup here in, in our, our house. my sister-in-law, <laughs> she's like, you need a she shed. <laughs> and I'm looking around at the stuff between quilting stuff. So I have a sewing machine to do uh, quilted items and between the sewing machine and the paints and things that I use when I'm working with material and uh, everything else with the paints. Needless to say, we I don't, I don't know if I could fit it all in a shed. I fit it all right here, but I don't know. Maybe I could. <laughs> uh, a she shed. I still love seeing those commercials, by the way. <laughs> All right, so starting the second coat on their faces. And again, I did not realize when I was collecting paints that they do have little uh, rosy cheek marks here. And so I'm going to uh, I'm gonna have to grab a, a light pink 
which thankfully it's on top of the tr tear tray, so it's not hard to get to. So we'll get that as we get further down the line and get their faces completed. But right now we are just going to finish working on our Scarecrow family's faces. This is a light mocha color. Gonna have some fall colors in this one. And of course there's a pumpkin here at the bottom that the little one is kind of sitting on. I thought this was a pretty good brush when I grabbed it. It covers a lot of area, but it is a little tricky in some of the tight spots, which thankfully being the lighter color and knowing that the darker colors will be around it, it will cover up any lines that I cross. So that's a good thing. But this brush may not be the best choice for other colors. A lot of times I'll use the same brush over and over. I shanghaied a tablet <laughs> and brought it in here to the side so I can read the comments. So if you are joining me this evening, say hi. A lot of times I will have issues with uh, the comments not wanting to come up. And a lot of times I have to answer comments after the live is over with. But uh, I am hoping, which I may not get to Shanghai, may not get to Shanghai this tablet next week, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Someone will probably come in and go, hey, have you seen? Well, yeah, kind of, sort of. It's, it's in use right now. <laughs> I got tired of not being able to see comments, y'all. I like to be able to talk to y'all and, and answer when y'all uh, tell me you're, you're live. Or if you're on the replay, say hi. I'll, hey, I'll comment back if you're watching this later on. Maybe you come in on Sunday night, can't sleep, or maybe you're like me and you're up for a while doing different things and you watch it. Just send me a hi. I'll answer back. All right, so I believe I have all of the lighter mocha color. Hand, face, hand, face, hand, face. Okay. All right, so we are going to uh, move to... Let's see, what color do we want to do next? As far as light colors go, there's not a lot of light colors. There's quite a few of the darker and bold colors for, um, for this particular door hanger. I think I'm gonna go with our yellow next. And this is what they call a uh, Fiesta yellow. It's a little bit of a, kind of a golden yellow. I thought it would look work well for the uh, hair since the hair is kind of the hay color and I know hay isn't necessarily always golden colored but we're going to uh, and not all of them are not all three of them have the golden hair okay so it is primarily daddy scarecrow here who has the golden hair. This is called a patio line of paint. It, it is, uh, some of the patio paints from DecoArt have unbelievable first uh, coat coverage. And I really, really like that. However, <laughs> having said that, I did come across a very bright color. I think it's the green in the patio. 
uh, one of the brighter greens that I have that um, it does not cover in one coat. I'll, I'll say I have to put uh, several coats on for that one. Now with the hair, if you're noticing that I'm going over the lines, uh, it's going to be traced in black. So it's going to be outlined in black. So I'm not really worried about getting into that little in-between area. All right, now also yellow, and I'm going to paint this the same color as the hair, is our little flower here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this one. And I will probably, uh, like I say, I always try to do two coats on on my door hangers just so I know that they're covered well. I still coat the door hangers, but I still like to know that they're covered well with, with paint. So I tend to always put two coats, except maybe sometimes the black. Sometimes the black I don't do two coats on it. It just depends. All right, so there is our bright yellow flower. Now I'm going to go back. Oops. Got way too much paint on the brush that time. So if you saw what I did, there was too much paint on the brush. So all I did was just kind of dab it off in the other sections. And now all I'm doing is spreading it out. So I actually did not have to re-dip my brush for that one whole side. Now some of the colors on this one are the darker and bolder colors, and so I didn't necessarily have to white base coat um, the, uh, the door hanger here, but I chose to uh, simply because I knew I'd have the yellow. And rather than just doing one section here and one section there, which I have done on some door hangers, if I know there's going to be a big section of black, I will simply, or another darker color, I will simply uh, base coat um, just the areas that I know will have a, a color on it. All right, so there is our yellow. And I may go ahead and change to a different brush. Um, I think I will. I'm going to lay him to the side and I am going to get um, hmm, maybe a couple of different brushes here. Maybe this one and maybe a filbert tip. And the reason why I'm going to grab a filbert tip is that some of these areas here have curves to them and I like using the filbert tip brush. It has a rounded end to it. So it's a flat brush but it has a rounded end, which makes it nicer in working with uh, curves and things. Okay, next on the agenda, let's see here. What color are we going to go with? We are going to go with, drum roll please, a light orange. It's going to be their noses. And I'm simply trying to work my way through to the darker colors trying not to uh, trying not to load the brush up with a dark color and then discover oh wow <laughs> probably should have uh, done lighter colors so that they wouldn't end up getting kind of mixed even though you you rinse your brush out you still sometimes have little bits of paint that hang around within the bristles and lo and behold, bless goodness, they tend to find their way out of the bristles at the most inopportune times. All 
and I tend to use my pinky as an anchor when I'm painting and I just realized there is part of this face that is still wet because I stuck my pinky in it. So, All right, I'm gonna give that just a couple of seconds to dry and I am going to um, check over here on the feed. Wonderful, 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 all looks good. I like to check it from here, even though I do have it on the side where I can see my comments. I still like to check from time to time and make sure that everything looks okay. Things have been known to go slightly amiss while being on, uh, on live. And so I do like to check. I have to say it's kind of nice having the tablet off to the side because I can kind of peek over every now and then. And like I said, if you're watching, just send me a hello so I can send you a shout. Thank you so much for watching this evening. If you're watching on the replay, thank you for checking it out on the replay. I appreciate it very much. Remember to spread the love to your family and friends. Not just the video, you can also do uh, any of the posts. And at the end of the month, I will um, put your name in a drawing for some mailbox delight uh, or uh, happy mail, as some folks call it. So I have got to uh, dawned on me the other day. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, August. I need to draw a happy mail winner for July. So I'll be doing that very soon. Okay, before I go too much further, you know, I told you about the pink. And so I am going uh, blush pink. Yeah, let's do blush pink. I'm just going to put an itty bitty drop here, just a couple of drops. Not too much. Because I don't think it's going to take too much to get those rosy little cheeks. And I probably should have done this before. Before I did the orange. We'll see how this works out. Hopefully I won't see any orange peeking through. This, this is the very example I was just talking about. <laughs> Trying to get the lighter colors down first before moving to the darker colors or else you will find that while you are painting all of a sudden the darker color will sneak through. And then sometimes you have to get a baby wipe and wipe it off. Sometimes you can get away with painting over it. Just freshen up the paint and paint right over it. Sometimes does not work that way. All right, so there's their little rosy cheeks. Just gonna rinse that out and we'll put him off to the side for a few minutes. All right, next we are going to start working on, I think I'm gonna do the green next for the flower, for the uh, stem and the leaf. And that'll be probably the last of my lighter colors. And from there, we will work on from there, we will work on the darker colors for our scarecrow family. Normally, I would not do this with a round brush, but rather than digging through more brushes, it was right here handy, so. It doesn't go as quick, but it does get the job done. Now, this is a light color, and so, yes, the white helps to bring out the color, but you're still going to have to do a couple of coats because um, you can see the white showing through that green. I don't know if you can see it on the actual uh, on the actual camera view, but uh, 
the white actually does shine through. All right, now starting with our darker colors, I'm actually going to start on the little, uh, our little friend here, our little scarecrow. So we are going to work on our little scarecrow's jumpsuit. I'm going to set that right there, and I am going to use the filbert tip on this one. Now, this is going to be the little jumper that our little scarecrow friend is wearing. Now, this purple is purple cow. <laughs> Always get tickled when I see this bottle of paint. <laughs> Now, you may be wondering about the uh, little stitch marks. They're going to be black, so I'm not, uh, or they could be white. Either way, it could go either way. I think I'm going to do mine black, but you could do them white. I'm just going to work around and get... Now, some of the colors that I have uh, actually go on all three of the scarecrows. So I may be jumping around a little bit when I'm uh, using some of the colors and painting on the different ones. This color, however, is only on the youngest scarecrow. So we're going to get this color. It's second coat, and then we will be finished up with purple cow <laughs> and move on to our next color. I have uh, th actually three different purples that I am using on this particular door hanger. All right, I think that is all I need for that particular color. All right, now while I'm waiting for that to dry just a little bit, I'm going to go back and pick up the green because it's had a little time to dry. And I'm going to add the second coat on our flower stem here so that way it'll get darkened up and I may actually do a third coat we'll we'll see two may do it sometimes yes sometimes no just depends on how I call it sheer uh, there's all kinds of descriptions for for it being see-through or thin, <laughs> however you wish to word it. All right, the next color purple that we're going to use, I'm actually going to go ahead and work on uh, the shirt, which all we see really uh, on the mom is the sleeve. But it is a little bit different color purple. So we're going to start with that one. I actually thought this was going to be just a little bit uh, pinkier purple.
but that's okay. We shall see how this looks once we get the dress color on there. All right, the patch on her um, dress is also the same color as her shirt. So we're going to go ahead and paint that a first coat as well. So at the beginning of the live, I mentioned that I have another fall door hanger challenge coming up. The one I did last year, of course, was the happy fall, y'all. I had a lot of fun with that one. Learned uh, how to do the buffalo plaid technique, which was a lot of fun. And I have used it uh, multiple times, not just on uh, not just on the happy fall, y'all, but on a, a couple of other things. That's been a lot of fun. I'm excited to see what uh, what new stuff I'll learn this year in the fall challenge. That's not happening this week, but it is coming up very soon. I actually got a couple of fall fall things going on as far as. Uh, new things to paint. One is just a workshop and the other one is a challenge. So the challenge is going to go on for several days. The workshop will only be for uh, two or three days. I think it's three days. So I'm excited about both of those. Get to learn new stuff. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get the hat and the shirt for the little scarecrow here. I have little bells going off all around me, and I'm like, why? <laughs> why are bells going off around me? Hmm. This purple is very, very close to that. It's funny because in the bottle, they are not identical or do not look similar in color. But up next to each other, they look very similar in color. Hmm. We'll see. Maybe they're being, you know, maybe they're twinning today. I can always come back and add some pink to uh, this purple color here and get it uh, a little more on the pinkish side. All right, now this one's a little hat. Having to focus a little more to make sure I don't get his hair or her hair. Maybe it's a her. I said jumpsuit, but maybe that's a little dress. Maybe the seeing how she's uh, there's little rosy cheeks. Maybe this is a little girl scarecrow. So we got a mama and a daddy and a little girl. So that would work. Her and her mom can be twinning. That that works. You know. Matching colors. <laughs> it happens. 
Now, my now 13-year-old would, you know, not be so excited about that. But, you know, there was a day. <laughs> where if we wore the same t-shirt or something. Oh, mommy, we're twins. All right, so get the last little bit on the hat here for our little scarecrow. Now, the little, okay, I started to say, does the little scarecrow have a purple patch? But no, the patch is a different color. All right, so, um, oh wow, as that one is drying, and it's going to need yet another coat. I can see variation in the two colors. Yay! I think this may be the third coat I am putting on here. I can't remember now, but it's very possible. Sometimes colors require that. It just depends on... just depends on the paint and the color of the paint. And I'm almost out of this color. See if we can make it stretch. Just get to the end. Yay. Okay. Good. Maybe that'll be all that we need out of that purple. All right, so now I'm going to move on to uh, a blue, well, it's, um, it's a peacock teal color. And there's quite a bit of the peacock uh, color being used in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get a pretty good bit in my little, my little uh, egg carton here. To get my paints rearranged, just a fuzz. Okay, I'm gonna try with this one. This I may have to uh, may have to go back and get a smaller brush. So let's see. Am I still on? I have to watch when I get closer to the edges. Make sure that I stay on camera. I like the peacock color. Now it's funny because the lights, looking at it on um, on camera, the lights make it look uh, more blue than what it is. It's actually a very pretty, very pretty green color. A peacock color. <laughs> That's the reason peacock teal. <gasps> I wish the lights and the camera made it look like it's supposed to, though. It looks more blue on camera. Which is funny, because I'm sure sometimes uh, some of the colors, when they don't look their true color, I'm sure some folks are like, what in the world did she pick for that color? This is why I do my best to post pictures afterwards, even though, <laughs> again, <gasps> camera and lighting, <sighs> you don't get the exact color you're looking for uh, when you're trying to get, get those pictures. Okay, let's see. Her dress is also the peacock teal. We're just going to work our way around the arms and also the patch. Now 
Now here's where the tricky part is going to come in. Not really tricky, it just means that I have to slow down and pay attention to what I'm doing. I call it tricky because it means I can't just go and be through with it. Don't y'all love my sound effects? <laughs> That was the fast brush technique sound effect, in case you were wondering. <laughs> in case you want to look it up online. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is her dress and her hat. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the hat and uh, put another coat on it. Before I go over to the other two. Actually, I don't think the little one has any of the peacock teal. I don't think the little girl has any peacock teal. Oh, yes, she does. I take that back. Her patch is peacock teal. So, yes, all three of them have peacock teal in their, in their outfits. I told you I'd be using a good bit of this one. All right, come back to the mom's dress. I love the door hangers with a lot of color. Sometimes I like simplicity, but I like the ones with a lot of color in it. I like to watch as I'm painting the different shades and it, it starts to come to life and you can begin to see the different, different layers of the door hanger as they start to pop. Okay, so now the little one her little patch on her dress is the peacock teal color. And then on the dad, we actually have uh, the cuff of his overalls, we'll call it, or jumpsuit, not really sure. I don't really see the overall look going on because I don't see any suspenders. We'll just call it a jumpsuit. <laughs> All right, is there anything else on him? No, that's it. It's just that one little cuff that shows on him. Okay, I think I got enough on that patch, and I think I got enough here on this one. Now, the main overalls for him are actually a lighter version of the peacock teal, so I'm just going to double check real quick, make sure that I've got everything co covered with the peacock teal, because what I want to do, I'm going to take white, and I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit, so I'm going to rinse my brush because I don't want to get any, any of the darker mixed in. I dropped something and I don't know what I dropped. And it may have just been part of my apron down here, which I forgot to put on, by the way. I set it in my lap because I'm trying to do better about making sure I don't get it all over my clothes. But uh, I forgot to put my, my apron on. All right, so I'm going to put some more peacock teal, and then I'm going to grab my white. I'm going to lighten it up. Put two or three little dots. And I'm just going to take the stick end of my brush and stir that up. And check it out. 
mm, maybe a little bit lighter. So a little bit more white. Put just a few more dots. Two, three. And see how that looks. Just going to work on stirring that up. Ah, oh, there we go. It's getting to the color I want. We want his uh, jumpsuit to look faded. So I'm going to take this color and lighten it up. And then start painting. Painting his jumpsuit. Now y'all know that scarecrows are not necessarily color coordinated, right? <laughs> Working around the little one's hair here. A little bit of a tight space. But that's when I just turn my brush sideways. And work on just kind of tapping it in there rather than brushing. Or if it's like that, then what I can do is tap and drag with the brush on its edge. I have considered with the start of school of moving uh, what's on my crafting table to a different day. One time thought about Monday evenings. If you have a preference, or I appreciate all thoughts, I love having input from y'all on uh, different things, and this would be one of those whether to leave it on Sunday evening or move it to maybe Monday. I know as fall and of course as the holidays get closer, things will get chaotic and be kind of crazy. Because that's what happens for that time of the year. For my schedule, Sunday just happened to be the day that worked out, but... Um, you know, with every school year, schedules change, different things happen, and so, y'all, I have, really, I have one of my blonde hairs trapped in the paint. Seriously? <laughs> All right, I got it out of there. All right, let's fix my mess. Oh, my goodness. I can't really say that I am a full-blown OCD person, but there are moments when I have uh, OCD moments or uh, a perfect. Now, I will say that I tend to be a perfectionist in some things. So, uh, I'm not sure if that's just perfectionism or if it's a partial OCD or just what it is. But anyway, <laughs> that was one of those moments. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. All right, so we've got, I think we've got the, well, no, we've got to do his shirt. Let's get his shirt. Let's do his shirt and get his shirt out of the way. 
what color what color was I going to do this shirt? The shirt oh nope that's cherry tomato. I did not want cherry tomato. Nope that's the little boy oh here it is. I was trying to group all the paint up in one spot and quickly discovered I don't have enough room to put it all in this one spot so I had to kind of move it around and now I'm looking going what happened to the I found it. All right, so this is a crimson color. Roll Tide for those Bama fans. <laughs> hey, it will not be long. I have been doing fall stuff, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know what? I need to throw in a football door hanger one Sunday evening and also a Halloween, which I actually had. Uh, a Halloween door hanger cut uh, and I'm probably going to do it next week and go ahead and get that. Well, I don't know. Now that I think about it, football is going to be before Halloween. So maybe I should do. There's another question for y'all. Number one question was keep it on Sunday for my live or move it to Monday. We'll start with that. And if nobody takes Monday, then I'll, I'll find another day, but I don't want to overwhelm you with choices. We have enough choices in life, don't we? I mean, you know, let's keep it simple. Choice A, choice B. Second question. Halloween or football door hanger next, next Sunday? Some of y'all are just itching for football, so I know which way y'all are going to go. Football. Some of y'all are already prepping for Halloween. My child has been one of them. This is the costume I want. Can I order it? I'm like, what month is it? <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Let me get past the start of school. Y'all, I'm just not. <laughs> uh... I said it out loud, the start of school, but I, I am, I'm like, I want my summer back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want my summer back. I feel like I blinked and we went from May to, well, school's starting. No, no, no. Can't be. We can't be there just yet. I'm not ready. On any level. Okay, I may have to work on a third coat for this one because I'm starting to push paint around. No, 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 stop. When you're working with paints and you start to see the paint getting pushed from one area to another, stop. Just stop. All right, next on the agenda, we are going to work on, um, I tell you what, let's go ahead and get the pumpkin painted. And the reason why I say that, if I go too much further, we're going to be into some colors that um, we may not be able to uh, not recover from, but but we may not be able to fight with the br with the brush and keep uh, keep those colors from shining through, especially for this pumpkin orange that uh, I'm working with. This is spiced pumpkin. Am I still on screen? I am just about off screen. Let me move him up just a little bit. See if I can keep him. I keep saying I'm going to find a block of wood or a box or something to uh, put my stand on that the overhead camera is on so that I can get a full shot without having to uh, move the door hanger. But then I finish the live and I forget. So 
I need to put it on my to-do list. I know. Put it on my list. All right, one more, or maybe that's her shoe. That's the pumpkin, but I think that's her shoe. That's not the pumpkin. Okay. I almost painted her shoe orange. <laughs> that would, hmm. I could have painted over it with brown because her shoe is brown and the little girl's shoe is brown. I could have fixed it. But if I can help it, I'd, I'd rather just paint it right the first time and not have to come back and fix it. A friend of mine ordered a birthday uh, cake door hanger. I, no, I don't do birthday cakes. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. A birthday cake door hanger. Okay. And uh, she painted it herself. I'll have to uh, share her photo. Turned out really well. She sent me a picture um, earlier. I'm also hitting that point where my days are starting to run together. I guess it's because it's that time of year and I'm just like, oh goodness, with all the things starting back up. Okay, now we're going to focus on the browns. And actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I don't think the mother's shoes are brown. I think they're black too. I'm going to do them brown, okay? <laughs> just going to make an executive decision here. Now, this is not the brown for the shoes. This is the brown for the dad's hat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You know what? That orange, not going to do that. Yep. I'm to move him back down. Uh-oh. Move him back down and then very carefully watch and make sure that I don't turn around and stick my shirt in the paint that I just put on the pumpkin. Like I said, if y'all have watched for any length of time, then you know I am prone to sticking my arm in the paint and get paint all over my shirt. And I've tried to do better about wearing my apron, but I just, what's so sad is it's sitting right in my lap. If I drop any paint off the brush in my lap, I'm covered. <laughs> it's just one of those, one of those moments, y'all. All right, so we're going to get around our little Mr. Scarecrow's hair here. Get the edge. Get right up to the edge of the hat. Right up to the edge where they, their heads meet. have some Christmas ornaments that I am going to be painting very soon. Started to paint part of her hair as part of his hat and then I realized, oh no, that's not, it's not his hat. That's her hair. 
I don't want to paint it brown. Okay. One more coat on his hat, and then we shall move on to We'll move on to the shoes next. And her hair and the little girl's hair are both a uh, shade of red. And so I'm going to save those to just before I use uh, the black paint. And that way I won't have black or red. leaking through. Take just the corner and get right in this little spot. All right. Okay, move him back up. I'm going to rinse this brush off. Their shoes are darker brown. And so that's, I think that's what's throwing me off with her. It looks black, but I remember when looking at the photo beforehand that their shoes were both dark brown and his are black. So I'm not going to put a whole lot of dark brown. I'm just going to put a little bit. And let's see. I'm going to use the filbert tip on this. Let's see if I'm going to be able to show... Let's move him up just a little bit more. See if we can get, move them up a little bit more. It's not just him. See if I can get them in the, in the picture here. Some door hanger sizes uh, just make it a little bit of a challenge. Because some of them are uh, bigger than 20 inches. Sometimes they're smaller than 20 inches. It just depends. All right, so there's mom's shoes. Let's get the little girl's shoes. And these should be easy to see on camera. They're in a much better position. Get them taken care of. Then we're going to move to the red hair for both the mom and the daughter. And we are coming down to the last of the colors and then we'll start to do our outlining. Now this particular brown, this is dark chocolate brown, and it does require a couple of coats because it, uh, I like the dark chocolate brown, but it is one that, uh, that does not go with just a one coat application. And sometimes, if I'm not careful, and it's not dry, I will smear it around and then I have to stop and wait and let it dry just a little bit more and then I can move on to the next coat. Now on the shoes, probably going to use, I don't know, we'll see. Start saying, I'm probably going to use white to uh, draw the outlines so you can see it better. But I may I may actually uh, 
I may actually try the black and see how that looks. Okay. Oh, I need, hmm, what I do, I think I was using this bigger brush with that. Need to put one more coat on his shirt. A lot of colors tonight in the three coat category. You know, it's kind of funny with the patches that are on the uh, on the clothes. You could actually leave them where it was not 100% evenly shaded. You know, because when you think about it, some patches, when you put them on clothes, they are not perfectly shaded all the way around. All right, I am going to need a smaller brush for the hair on the mom and the little girl. So what I am going to do, I am going, this little filbert tip looks like a good color. Okay, now for the, yeah, for the little girl, we're going to go with her first because this is actually a lighter, this is called watermelon. So it's a watermelon red. And I am actually going to go with it first. before I go to the darker red, which is the mom's hair. That's one thing I did not do this summer was uh, any watermelon door hangers. Last summer I had uh, two or three that I did, but I actually did not do any watermelon door hangers this summer. I was trying to think if I had any new templates for watermelons. I think I had one. I'm not going to worry too much about staying in the lines on this little part because most of this hair is joined together. And so what I'm going to do is... Uh, Just separate it with the outline. <laughs> In case y'all are wondering why I got wide-eyed. <laughs> Someone close by cranked up a truck then. I was not expecting it. Kind of startled me a little bit. <laughs> Kind of like the night, the 4th of July, when I was painting and uh, all the fireworks started cranking up. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> all right, this one dried fast, so I'm going to go ahead and start the second coat. Once I'm through with that, then I'll move on to the mom's hair. And then what we'll have is uh, our black details that we need to add in. We'll have to do the shoes for the dad. And then um, the black details around Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> ah darker red for the mom's hair. Now this is actually cherry red. I told you the, the little girl has um, watermelon. This is actually cherry red is the color that I'm going to be using on the mom's hair. So it's going to be a darker red, which is why I wanted to get uh, the little girl scarecrow done first. 
This kind of reminds me of Raggedy Ann's hair color. I don't know. Hers may be a brighter red. Throw in a little um, Halloween of the past, his past history. I was Raggedy Ann when I was a little girl. <laughs> My mom made me a Raggedy Ann costume all the way to the hair, y'all. She bought red yarn and she made the hair for me. Yes, there are pictures, but I don't have any here. <laughs> The costume actually started uh, with uh, the fall festival. And so the fall festival at, at the school I was attending at that time, I wore it for that and uh, was in the costume contest. I, I did not win. I don't really remember who, what costume won uh, that year, uh, but it, it was not Raggedy Ann. And then I wore it on Halloween for trick-or-treating. So, yes, I have been Raggedy Ann in my life. So that's why I was saying, hey, that looks like a Raggedy Ann's hair color. Close. It may have been a little bit lighter. And I did have Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls. And actually, I think my mom made those, now that I think about it. I don't think I had those bought from a store. I think she actually bought the pattern and made me the dolls. Which would explain why she had practice making the hair. Gosh, we're bringing up, uh, <laughs> bringing up memories there. I haven't thought about my Raggedy Ann and Andy dolls in a long, long time. Or the costume, either. Okay. Now. Uh, oh, the center of my flower. Oh, that one's the dark. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Give me that little filbert tip back. I've got to do the middle of my flower. It's the dark brown. This is where I start finding all the little things. Oh, I missed this. Oh, I missed that. As I start to come to an end, this is why I was trying to kind of take my time, make sure I looked at my example. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute and let it finish. All right, now for the black, because we have a good bit of black. We have shoes and we have eyes. Um, for the shoes, I'm going to use this flat tip brush. It had orange, but that's okay. The black will definitely cover that up. Don't have to worry about orange leaking through. Now, sometimes I will use the black paint and a round tip brush to um, to do my outlining. I did that last week. It takes more time, but uh, well, like I've said before, I sometimes I like the look of the brush rather than a paint pen, and so I will take the additional time to get the look that I'm looking for. And I am probably off camera. I am so sorry, y'all. I really do need to make myself a note to either get a chunk of wood or a box 
and raise the stand up just a little bit. The stand is as high as it will go, the camera stand. So Sometimes you just have to improvise with what's on hand. And so I keep telling myself I'm going to find a box or a block of wood, and I just haven't done it yet. Okay, so there is the black for the shoes. Now I'm going to take a round brush and just use it to do the eyes. If you are not on our mailing list, our e-newsletter comes out on Sunday nights. Our e-newsletter, straight to your inbox. You can find out uh, what's been going on, what is planned for the week ahead, what's coming up, all that good stuff. Usually, if there are any sneak peeks or I don't want to say privileged information, but um, pre-release info, we'll say we'll put it that way. <laughs> that comes up in the e-newsletter. All right, I'm going to put all those cute little brushes in there. And uh, now I, oh, here we go. It's like, what happened to my paint pens? Since there is a good bit of outlining, I'm going to go ahead and use the paint pen for tonight. And uh, let me test it real quick. Okay. Looks like we're doing good. I am actually going to start at the top. I'm just going to go around the nose. And then we're going to do the mouth. I got my hand on the light and I can't see where I'm going. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're starting to see our little scarecrows come to life. Yay! Come around the hair. And I need to come around the face. Trying to make sure I'm still in all the camera views. All right, we're just going to make a line here for his hat. And go ahead and join it around to the face. And then we're going to come this direction. I'm just going to go ahead and pick up the little one's hat here and bring it on around and connect it to the other side of the face. Got a little wobbly without having my pinky to stabilize me. But I am trying not to get my pinky in the wet paint. I think I mentioned earlier about, uh, no, maybe I didn't. I've got a, uh, a reminder, but I don't know if I mentioned it or not. 
the Kids Art Club. That is getting ready to open up here very, very soon. So if you have a homeschooler who loves art and you have not been able to, because of everything going on, you have not been able to attend art classes, the Kids Art Kit and online classes sign up is coming up really soon there will be a limited number of spots once those spots are filled or well let me take that back there's a limited number of spots but I'm also going to have a limited number of days to sign up so that I can get all the supplies purchased I would love to be able to keep it open all the time but I have to be able to order supplies and with school starting um, you know, you just have to make sure that I have to make sure that I can get all the quantities that I need. So I'm going to be uh, opening the doors to officially opening the doors to um, the kids art club very soon. So keep watching for that for those dates. And that is a subscription box. If you get the box, there will be two options. There will be a video only option. You can uh, access, pay, uh, pay one fee to access the video only. And you will purchase the supplies. I will send you a list of supplies for the month. And you will get access to the Facebook group, the private Facebook group, and the videos each week, the online classes. Or you can purchase the kit, and of course the video is part of the kit. The access to the Facebook group and the video are part of the kit. In the kit, you will get all the supplies needed for that month's lessons. If you are unfamiliar with the art, the Kids Art Club, it is uh, four art lessons. That's one for each week of the month. They deal with a topic or a theme, but it's not just about the drawing and the painting and all the fun stuff. They also get information. So like if we're doing the ocean as a theme, we may do a jellyfish, and if we uh, paint a jellyfish, then there will be information uh, shared with them about the jellyfish. So it is not just about colors and paints and markers and making pretty pictures that they can display each week for the family. It's also about learning about what we're drawing about, or coloring, or painting. So that is the Kids Art Club, the QT Kids Art Club, QT being uh, Quilted Treasures. even though it is kind of a strange way of saying cute kids. <laughs> and we all have cute kids, right? Of course we do. I may have to prime my pen again. It's beginning to, uh, oh yeah, it's beginning to lose its, beginning to lose its oomph there. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks much better. I'm trying to work my way down so that way, uh, again, I won't get my clothes in the middle of the paint pen.
just working around and getting the outline done on our Scarecrow family here. Trying to get everybody outlined and finished up. So that way we can wrap up tonight's lesson or tonight's live. I will post pictures of the finished Scarecrow family tomorrow or Tuesday. And I'm just going to clean up the edges around the shoes. It's not so much that it's going to show up because I'm actually going to take a white marker and go between so that way you can actually see the difference between the black shoes because right now it just looks like one big shoe. All right, so I'm going to come down the arm. And bring that around and then I'm going to go around the hand and I still have his hat to finish up there's a lot of outlining on this one but I think once I finish all the outline and get some highlights in he's gonna be little scarecrow family is gonna be so cute and I know I am going off camera, but all I'm doing is outlining the hat. All right, so let's get back to the little girl and get her dress finished. And then we're going to get our pumpkin outlined as well. And I'm going to go off camera with this one. Just know that I am just outlining the bottom of the pumpkin. I'll slide him up just a little bit. Now I'm going to go around the mom's shoes. And create that break between her two shoes. And now her dress. And get her little patchwork done. All right, I think we're moving along pretty good. So now we're going to go around the stem and the leaf for our little flower. Get that finished up. Start working on her sleeve, not her dress, her sleeve. And as I work my way around, I'm going to get the bottom of her face. Get that taken care of. And I will start with the flower. Now on the flower, you can go right up to the edge or you can do like I'm doing and just coming inside to highlight it. <laughs> Our dog is just coming back in from outside and he is most excited. I don't know if he thinks he's going to get uh, a treat or something, but <laughs> he's very happy jumping around.
All right, so there is our flower. All right, well, hey, we're coming down to the stretch here. Thank you all for hanging out with me this evening. If you'd like more information about the QT Kids Art Club, I can email you more info or message you more info. All you need to do is in the comments, simply uh, type add me and your email address and I will be happy to email you more info. Also, if you'd like to be added to our weekly e-newsletter and get that right in your inbox, simply comment, add me. Or you can visit our website and actually fill out a form and be uh, put into our e-newsletter list. Either way, our website is www.quiltedtreasuresandmore.com and that is all spelled out. All right, around the eyes I go. And get the last of the hair. Oh, the hat. Got to get the hat. And we are almost there, y'all. I will add highlights after it's all had time to dry really well. I'll let it dry just a little bit longer. And then I'll come back and add highlights to our little scarecrow family and post pictures of them all finished here in the next day or two. I'm going to go ahead and take this white real quick and just go ahead and put a break between these two shoes. Because we want to be able to tell that... that he does have two shoes. And we're just gonna put a glint in everybody's eye. <laughs> so there's our little scarecrow family, all put together and ready for a wonderful afternoon. Maybe they're going out to the park or, um, you know, who knows? Maybe they're just gonna hang out in the pumpkin patch for a little while and enjoy uh, a bright sunny day. Well, thank you so much for watching this evening. If you're watching on the replay, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great week. And uh, hey, don't forget to uh, leave me a comment and say um, football or Halloween or trick or treat, either way. Uh, and that'll help me decide which one to do next week. Matter of fact, I may post a picture, a this or that picture and have y'all vote on that uh, in the upcoming week, so I'll know which way to go. Also, um, if you'd like to vote in the comments about keeping the live on Sunday evening, or maybe uh, moving it to uh, Monday is, is the first option. So we'll go with Monday. And if we have no takers or votes for Monday, then we'll leave it on Sunday and maybe, uh, maybe offer a second uh, day in the weeks to come. Y'all have a great evening.